Good night. Yay. We're live. And I think there's a few, yeah, there's a few people chatting away to Hannah already today. Hannah's on School of Walk feed. Hi, guys. Not in my home. Uh, we are uh, live from uh, one of our kitchens, uh, from the office studio kitchen, on a proper digital digital SLR. Chris is on the camera here, showing us close-ups of all the wonderful things that I'll be making later on. Um, uh, I am doing a paid membership uh, live demonstration later on at 5 p.m., uh, so you've got to sign up for that if you haven't already uh, joined the membership. Uh, you just click the link. I think Hannah's already put the link there uh, in the feed. Uh, but during this session, uh, the Q&A session with you guys, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a quick side dish, uh, a pickled potato. A lot of people have no idea that you can pickle a potato. So I'm going to show you that whilst I'm going. Um, but uh, of course, this is a Q&A. Uh, so I'm here primarily to answer you guys and answer your questions. Um, uh, so uh, as uh, I'm sort of peeling and chopping and things like that, I'm gonna try my best to answer as many questions as I can over the next half hour on this beautiful sunny day here in London. I'm guessing you guys will be logging in from all over the world as usual. Um, uh, so I can't wait to answer your questions. I'm ready. If you guys are. Hello. I can't see that many questions, that, that much coming into the feed yet. But anyway, um, uh, let's, oh, I'm going to sort of stretch over here. Can I stretch over here, Chris? Mm -hmm. ah. Okay. So um, I think I'm still a bit early, aren't I? I think a bit early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll give it a couple of minutes, guys. I'm going to peel my potato first. But hello to everyone who's here already. Uh, I think we scheduled this for four o'clock. And for once, most probably because I'm not just doing this by myself, we are early. Oh, I've just thrown some potato skin into the oil. So if you are just joining us, guys, uh, welcome back to the School of Walk live Q&A uh, with me. I'm, I am here in our school kitchens. Uh, this is one of our studio, this is our studio kitchen only probably for another week or two, um, and then we'll be back in the actual cookery school. But today, we've got the wonderful Chris on um, my close-up camera here. Uh, I'm try we're trying out a new bit of technology and hoping that this works a treat, and it's working a treat so far. I'm currently ho holding a whole load of potato skins, and I have no idea why. Give me a second. <laughs> Yay. Rubbish. Okay, so the whole point of today or this session uh, from now for the next half an hour is a live Q&A, but I am going to be cooking or showing you how to make a pickled potato, a really simple Chinese, it's a northern Chinese side dish, which I'll use as a side dish for uh, my two dishes that I'm going to be cooking on the YouTube live uh, demo on our paid membership channel. You'll see the link, uh, Hannah's, uh, Hannah is on our School of Walk um, uh, chat there, she's popped the link up there. Hi, Jason. Hi, everyone. Hi, Noor. Hi, Simon. Everyone is here. We love a good party. Um, and here we go. Hi, Jerry. Will you be doing any of your recipes from your book, Hong Kong Diner, on your channel? Yes. Uh, that's a good question. Well, the two dishes, um, no, the two dishes I'm cooking on the live stream uh, on the paid membership at 5 p.m. today, uh, one of which is from Chinese Unchopped, and the other one is indeed a recipe from Hong Kong Diner. Uh, I believe it's 128, page 128. I'll be cooking this paper tofu um, uh, on, uh, at 5 p.m. today on the YouTube paid membership. But uh, for those who aren't on the paid membership uh, and uh, just what, like to watch our What Wednesdays, so you know, we have filmed a whole load of Hong Kong Diner um, recipes for What Wednesdays that should be coming out at some point between now and Christmas. So uh, watch out for those uh, and you'll see me sort of explaining those dishes as we go. But if you have just joined us, I'm going to make a pickled potato just because I can. Um, and I want to show you guys and give you a little tease as to sort of what we do 
um, on the actual paid membership, um, uh, which is not just Q and A's, but answering a lot of questions around the cooking as well. Um, but hi, Jason. Lovely to see you. Hello from sunny Kent. Any news on the new cleaver you were testing in the previous live video? Uh, yes, I've had the new sample. I've got the new sample coming in in the next two weeks. Uh, and then hopefully uh, I've, been, I've been told by uh, the, um, the manufacturers, uh, the makers of that cleaver, uh, that if I don't get it right this time round, uh, that they're going to charge me a lot of money. So, um, uh, so I'm hoping that this next round is going to be the right round. So, Jason... Hold your horses. It will be there soon. Um, uh, so, hi, Jeremy. Do you ever use bicarb to soften meat? Poor V. Uh, thanks for sharing your watch skills with us. Hey, no problem. And, and Nanya. Um, do, do, do. No, smoky noodles, to be accurate. Oh, may I ask? Oh, OK. So let me go up a little. Sorry, I'm going to start from the top. Um, uh, may I ask how, it's from No, how, how to get the smoky flavor into smoky noodles? Look, the smokiness in your noodles is all going to come from your wok hay. So you're building up a high heat at the beginning in your wok. To, once you see your oil smoking hot, that's when you're going to add your sort of uh, soaked but dried noodles into the wok, and they'll pick up bits of that smoke. You can't just let them sort of sit and burn on the wok. You've got to sort of move them around and move that wok's air around the noodles, and that soaky that the noodles are then sort of take in some of that smoky flavor. So hopefully that answers your question, Noor. Um, uh, as I'm going, we keep going around. I'm kind of just leaning over some hot oil here, which is probably not a good idea. I'm going to switch that off. Um, uh, so uh, do you ever use Paul V? Hi, Paul, one of our members. Um, uh, lovely to see you. How do, uh, do you ever use bicarb to soften meat? No, I, you know what? Bicarb, great. I mean, it, you use it for cakes and things like that. Um, but um, I do find that um, the, the sort of bicarb method of, of soaking um, meats or tenderizing meats, um, if, especially if you lose, leave, it, leave the bicarb on there for, you know, too long, um, then it can make your meats feel very spongy rather than just tender. I, I quite like, I like my meat to be succulent, but it still needs a bite. And I don't, I, I don't like it when it gets that sort of spongy texture, which is why I'd, I prefer not to use bicarb uh, when I'm uh, to soak meats, which is the traditional, if you don't know guys, the traditional way in restaurants to um, tenderize, in Chinese restaurants to tenderize your meat. Um, where I do use bicarb um, is when I'm sort of cleaning um, uh, sort of seafood, especially seafood, um, like, uh, I, I guess, oysters and things like that, that might have um, a little bit of a strong smell. Um, and that um, bicarb sort of, not soaking, but sort of rubbing bicarb around seafood and even prawns cleans your seafood um, very, very well. And you get almost, you get them sort of squeaky clean. So that's where I do use a little bit of bicarb here or there. Um, not so, so much to soften the meat, more to clean uh, things like your seafood uh, uh, and fish sometimes too. Um, so hopefully that gives you a bit of guidance there, Paul. Um, uh, hi, Jeremy. It's from OC Daddy. Uh, hi, Jeremy. Have you seen Uncle Roger's video showing all of a cooking air fryer? I've seen all of Uncle Roger's videos. They have made myself and my wife laugh a lot. Although the first one was definitely the funniest. Um, in case, yes. What's your take on it? I loved it. Haven't laughed that hard. <laughs> uh, I completely agree. It was really, really funny, um, especially uh, the point in which uh, Jamie Oliver started putting some tofu uh, into his fried rice, which at that point I felt uh, Uncle Roger's pain. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I won't get into that, that too much. I would love to do a collaboration with Uncle Roger, though. Um, I'm sure he'd take the piss out of me, too. Um, your channel really inspires me. Thank you, Ananya. Um, uh, for more and more in of Chinese speaking, great stuff. We love, we do love Uncle Raja. Okay, got you. Uh, so, tell me your head, tell me your head. Yes, yeah, you're right, Noor. Tell me in the head. Um, Luke, how are you? Uh, why don't you like using MSG in your recipes? Uh, okay, the, the, the MSG comes from natural um, uh, ingredients uh, like tomatoes. Uh, Mushrooms like these shiitake mushrooms here, um, uh, you know, seaweed, uh, prawns. But uh, when MSG is used in Chinese restaurants and takeaways, 
I find that well, I, if, if, if anyone's ever seen a restaurant uh, um, kitchen, a lot of the classic restaurant kitchens, they've got your wok burner and then they've got shelves sort of above them and to the side. Usually the Chinese chefs would have a bowl of salt, bowl of sugar and a bowl of MSG above their wok burners. And they'd use their ladle, which might be sort of this sort of size, and they sort of dip the base of their ladle very roughly into those bowls before it goes into the cooking. Uh, there's nothing measured there, first and foremost. And if you've got a whole like surface area of ladle, like dipped in MSG and gone into your cooking, I find that it, I react to it quite, quite a lot. So um, I, I, I get this dryness in my mouth uh, and it's enhancing the food for no apparent reason i mean natural food tastes great in itself anyway which is why i much prefer not adding msg to my cooking like in some of these sauces here you might have a little a tiny little percentage of msg in some of these sauces i'm okay with that um uh, because it's scientifically measured um and they, it, and and also we're using bits and bobs of those sauces to create that food but added msg absolutely not necessary so uh, I think that's where Uncle Roger would probably uh, disagree with me. Um, so uh, there's my answer to MSG. I actually had a, I have a story about MSG. When I was in, um, when I was starting the business, I did, some, uh, I did some consultancy for a restaurant group. And the owner of that business, the first gift he bought me was a massive box of MSG. And he said, please use it. Uh, I want to see what you think. I know what your thoughts are already. Uh, I, 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 I didn't use it. I just cooked him all the dishes and then designed his menu for him. And the, the, that box of MSG got further and further to the corner and the back of my, um, my, one of my covers in the kitchen. Uh, so it never got used uh, and didn't need to because my food tastes great without it. Um, uh, so uh, keep going. So can you please post more on vegan recipes uh, with good amount of what cooking, like that of a leftover stir fry? Yeah, I mean, I, they, they, of course I can. <laughs> no problems. We can do vegan cooking. But, um, uh, you know, leftover stir fries, uh, they're so simple. I mean, you, you, as long as you follow that basis of setting up your wok clock and doing one thing after another, after another, after another, um, and putting things in at the right time and removing things from your wok if there's too much in there before you're going back into the high heat, then that's absolutely fine. So just, you know, um, with your stir fries, you can put whatever you want in and leftovers are great for it. Your sauces, try different flavors. You know, you might start with like an oyster sauce based sort of flavored sauce or a vegetarian oyster sauce like what I've got here. Um, that's like a mushroom extract on that veggie, uh, veggie stir fry sauce. Um, that will give you a, a sort of a, a mellow, savory, uh, sort of savory flavor. And then um, you might want to mix that uh, either just with some rice wine or some stock as a simple recipe or change it with some chili paste or some chill chow chili oil if you want something more spicy you know play with the sauces um it makes most importantly get that balance of flavor texture and color that's very important when you're making any sort of sauce up um i should be making my pickled potato shouldn't i right i'm going to stop you guys yeah i mean you guys bring in the, the questions i'm going to i'm just going to make a mental note i was on vegan recipes from ananya and it's Richie after that. So um, the pickled potato here, I've literally got a normal potato, a white potato, um, and I've finely julienned or um, um, finely sliced this up into matchsticks. Um, I've got some um, hot water here. And so when you're making pickled potato, if I just ate this raw now, it would be very floury. In fact, I'm going to do it, but I'm not a great fan of that. Um, it'd be very, very floury. Um, so what you, you, you want to do is you want to blanch the, the potato uh, in uh, hot water um, just for about 30 seconds before I then uh, cool it and pickle it. And it's a very, very quick pickle, like making a cucumber pickle or anything like that. Sesame oil, a little bit of rice vinegar. I'll talk you through that in a second. But it's really, this is really, really quick stuff. OK, so, um, so I'm going to take my potato uh, Julien matchsticks of potato and I'm going to sort of pop these onto my what we like to call the spider but our little bamboo metal strainer here and then I'm going to pop that into my boiling hot water in a second um, uh, and I'll um, uh, once that's boiling that is uh, and and then 
I'll pickle it about 30 seconds after that. Not, whilst that's coming up to boil, I'll answer a few more questions. Um, so, Richie, hey, Jeremy, are you planning on doing any more Filipino recipes? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to because uh, it's a long time since I've been to the Philippines and uh, I do miss it. I miss traveling. I bet you guys do too. I miss, you know, really, really miss traveling. So I, I can, I, there's one Filipino dish that I love was the, um, the, the roast suckling pig uh, on the spit. Uh, and, and it came with lots of different sort of uh, condiments. It was literally just roast, roast, roast pig on a spit. But it was the condiments that did it, the chili sauces and this almost like um, uh, the, the vinegar based uh, sort of uh, dressings uh, that came on the side. Uh, and I remember having a, a takeaway of, of that in, uh, in, on a trip uh, with my wife uh, and a friend. Uh, and it, we just gouged ourselves in, this, in the camper van. Uh, on this uh, takeaway suckling pig. Uh, we had no tissues, so we had to sit in the uh, van for about uh, three hours after that with very, very greasy hands, but it was worth it. Um, so yeah, we can make some Filipino recipes, definitely. Um, it's a lovely Thai recipe, thank you very much. Um, Paul, uh, from, hey Jeremy, what's your favorite takeaway? Good question. I don't get a takeaway very often, <laughs> um, but when I do, one rule is, I, you're not allowed to do anything if you have a takeaway. So um, my missus will always try and say, look, we'll make the rice ourselves or let's heat the takeaway up in the oven when, you know, when it comes in. And I'm kind of like, no, no, no. The whole point of takeaways, just sit in front of the TV, do nothing, take the takeaway box and eat out of that. Uh, curry. Uh, I, Indian takeaway is definitely my favourite. Um, I, I do cook a lot of Indian curries, but I quite like that sort of dirty UK Indian takeaway curry. Um, so uh, that, there's your answer. Um, I, I'm almost boiling, but I think I've got time for another question here. Uh, Eileen Fort, uh, we are gluten free. We're a gluten free family. Uh, any noodle suggestions for low main? Love you, by the way, Florida, USA. I love you too. Um, gluten free noodles. There's loads of different types of gluten free noodle, noodles. Uh, try the Korean sweet potato noodles for low main. Quite good. Um, rice vermicelli, you can get the thicker rice vermicelli, that's really lovely. Uh, the other day I tried some burdock noodles, um, but I'm not sure they have wheat in them. You have to double check that. Um, but generally mung bean vermicelli, rice vermicelli, um, uh, and then uh, your sweet potato noodles. And you also get different types of bean or pulse noodles now, uh, which are very, very good. So try those out. Anything lol mean, if you're sort of soaking your noodles first, soak them first so that they're not too soggy. Once you've got your sauce ready with gluten-free noodles, I would boil them in the sauce for a little bit longer than your wheat-based noodles. Um, so hopefully that helps you there. Luke Kerr, thanks for a really good answer. And I love your Chinese unshot book. Thank you. It is going out of, uh, out of print at the moment. So uh, it might be out of print for a couple of months before um, we managed to get some more in, but I have uh, a pending order uh, to get some more in because I know that uh, it's getting a lot more popular. Uh, it's one of those books that should be on the shelf as long as it possibly can, I think. Um, Paul, hi, Jeremy. What's your thoughts on wok thickness? Serious, ser serious Eats page recommends a two millimeter thickness. Do you think it makes a difference or minor 1.6? <sighs> I, my answer, Paul, is, and this might sound a little bit cocky, but it's about your what skill and how quickly you are able to maneuver the wok and move things around. So the thinner the wok, the quicker your heat is going to change up and down and round and round. And so, you know, you, if you're quick enough and you can react quick enough to it, then that's great. The thicker the wok, uh, the heavier it will be. Uh, and the slower it will heat up, but also the slower it will cool down. So it depends on your type of cooking. Also, if you're doing a lot of stir frying and things like that, the thinner the wok, the better, in my opinion. Um, uh, but if you're doing more sort of slow cooked stuff or you, you, you want a really big wok and, you know, the thicker woks are good for sort of sitting there more stable where you might want to deep fry in a slightly thicker wok than this usually. Um, uh, and definitely if you're doing slow cooked curries or even making a bolognese, uh, which some people do in a wok, 
um, then uh, maybe the thicker woks are better. Each wok or cooking utensil has a different use for a different time. Um, uh, so I, I wouldn't be as specific as, uh, as Cirrus eats on the thickness. Uh, I'd be more sort of, I guess, inquisitive about sort of what types of food you like to cook and how you like to cook those dishes. Um, uh, so let John, you're right. That is the right word for the roast suckling pig. I completely forgot that. Thanks for reminding me. Um, uh, another question from Ananya. Uh, I'm really hoping for a video on crispy tofu chili from you. Uh, just a suggestion for what Wednesdays. We will note that. Hannah, can you make a note of that? Um, we'll make uh, a crispy tofu chili just for you. Um, uh, Jackie B, hey, Jeremy, when are you making Filipino food, please? Uh, when are we making? Oh, I guess we can make it soon. Uh, hey, Jeremy, what is your favorite video game? Mario Kart. <laughs> I prefer that fl uh, flat bottom walk above the round bottom. Okay. Uh, gas stove needs a special ring that does not come with a walk. We sell the, uh, the, the wok rings, so you can look at that on the School Wok website web page. Um, uh, but you know, again, flat bottom woks—they were invented for Western stoves like this, uh, flat stoves. Uh, a round bottom wok sits on most gas hobs, to be fair. Um, and my my preference, if you can keep hold of your round bottom wok, is always a round bottom wok. Personally, um, my uh, water's boiling here now, so I'm going to hold you guys there and just talk you through my pickled potato. Uh, whilst I can. So I'm going to go watch this and blanch this in the hot water for literally sort of 30 seconds, no more. Because what I, I don't want your potato to start to break down. I'm just trying to get rid of the, the sort of chalkiness of the, um, of the potato. Um, and once I've gotten rid of the chalkiness, uh, after about 30 seconds to a minute, I'm going to take this out and uh, drain this very quickly under some cold water before I then pickle it. And honestly, that quick cooking um, just takes out the rawness of the potato. So I'm going to take this out now. Just give me a second. I'm going to the sink. Give me a second. So I'm just running some cold water through this cooked potato or very, very quickly cooked potato. I want it to stop cooking um, and then I'm gonna take this out pretty much immediately and then pop it straight into my serving dish and when I when you cook potato like this what it does is it keeps its crunch so it really is like a really fresh light um, uh, potato salad you might not hear this. Can you hear that? Nice and crunchy. Okay. Doesn't taste of anything yet because I haven't seasoned it with anything. I've got some finely chopped up or sliced up spring onion here, which I'm going to pop into that potato. Uh, and I'll finish this off um, now before I answer the rest of your questions. What am I doing with time? Okay. Some rice vinegar. You can use white rice vinegar or um, black rice vinegar as well. I don't have any black rice vinegar, so I'm just going to use white. Okay, so rice vinegar, and then some salt and sugar. The sugar's to balance out the vinegar. Salt for seasoning, but I'm also gonna put a bit of light soy in there and some sesame oil. And it's just a very simple mix around. No light soy sauce there. <laughs> light soy sauce over the top of that. And then a good amount of sesame oil over the top again and then just give that a little mix around and then over the next sort of 10 minutes or I'll, pro I'll use this for later on even if it sits in there for half an hour so just soak in all that flavor of the vinegar sesame oil right the simplest quickest side dish you can make and believe me guys it will blow your mind it is that simple but really tasty it just sort of freshens up your plate of rice and later on i'm doing a chassel so nice fatty roast um belly uh, or shoulder of pork um in barbecue sauce and and that will just cut through that pork really really well so really really simple um cooking in essence but um not really cooking 
Um, so uh, nice, simple cooking, guys. That's 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 our style, as as you know. Um, so I'm going to keep going with the questions. Hi, Jeremy. What's your favorite video game? We've gone that, gone that, we've covered that. Um, flat bottom rocks you've covered as well. Uh, Bain, uh, great channel. Really enjoying your recipes. Thank you very much. Question is, is corn flour the same as cornstarch? Yes, in the UK we call cornstarch corn flour. Um, so uh, that should uh, cover that. Um, as we keep going, please, uh, Aditya Gaming, please reply. I'm a big fan of you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we shop from uh, shop from. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, hi, Jeffrey. Morning. Lovely to see you. Um, Mike Brewer. Good morning, Jeremy. Your biggest fan from South Florida. Wookie. Woo! Uh, someone from Ready called Ready Study has written in a language that I cannot understand. But lovely to see you too. Um, uh, Jeffrey, uh, Mike Brewer, now I'm Jeremy's biggest fan. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I like that you're fighting over who is my biggest fan, but my mum is definitely still my biggest fan. Um, uh, is there a, st a tasty ice cream place near the school? Eric, yes, there is. Right next to us. Uh, we're, we're in the, the, the office kitchen here is about two minutes around the corner from the school, and there's the gelatiera, or gelatieria, right uh, next to us on New Row, which makes incredible ice cream. Uh, so, uh, yes. And, and in fact, I'm making a, a banquet on Monday uh, for one of my old customers, uh, and we're making our own condensed milk ice cream. So uh, maybe we'll put that recipe out on What Wednesday soon. Um, we're getting to the end of the questions here, I think. Uh, did a little, little. Uh, what was your favorite city you ever visited? Oh, that is a tough question, devil pudding. Good name too. Hmm. I'm a big fan of Barcelona. I love the food in Barcelona and I love the people and I love the sort of atmosphere, all the buildings and architecture as well. Uh, where else uh, do I, I? Rio de Janeiro, it, the way when you fly into Rio de Janeiro, uh, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing that sort of hits you more than a city like that in between the sort of valleys and the San Cristobal. Um, uh, Hong Kong, very close to my heart. Uh, and I, I'll never forget Hong Kong. Uh, so I'd have to say Hong Kong's up there. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, every city has its own beauty. Um, is, is soft, oh, here we go. Uh, how, hey, how to make chicken. Mama Shay, how to make chicken. How to make, is that a song? <laughs> how to make chicken, how to make chicken, how to make chicken. Mama Shay, Mama Shay, okay. Um, is soft broccoli the same as broccoli? Ray? Oh, I don't know. That's a really good question. Do you know, Chris? Mm -hmm. Is soft broccoli? Mm -hmm. I actually don't know the answer to that, Howard, and we will look it up. Um, but that is the first question in a long time that I've been asked about food, and I don't like know. Kohlrabi. Like kohlrabi? No, kohlrabi? No. I'm not sure. We'll get back to you on that one. Uh, loving your work. I've watched to try and loads of your recipes. Great. Thank you very much, Baking with Grace. Uh, I'm guessing you bake a lot, and I'd love to see yours. I've tried the gelateria. It's been there for years. Very good. You are right. Hi, Jeremy. Finding different kinds of noodles near me is quite hard. I can only get wheat fast-cooked noodles easy. Can I try to make pad thai with those? Uh, yes, you can make pad thai with your wheat noodles, um, but it probably won't necessarily be a pad thai. It'd be more like a chow a thai style chow mein um but if it tastes good then why not and and you know don't stop yourselves from eating good food just because you haven't got one type of ingredient um wow hey from malaysia lovely to see you yazan um babe what the what's the best type of rice to use for your fried rice recipes um jasmine rice we use a lot uh, in the school uh, and at home i use jasmine thai, thai jasmine rice basmati works really well as well Long grain rice is what's used in most takeaways in restaurants, uh, but I personally am more fan of the jasmine or basmati. Um, uh, so, uh, Lucas, uh, I was in Barcelona three times already. It's so pretty, but Tokyo was my favorite. You know what, Lucas? I haven't been to Tokyo yet. I wanted to go this year, but that is never going to happen this year. Uh, you inspired me to cook Chinese food. Thank you, Damola. Um, how many languages can you speak? Um, I speak Spanish. A little bit of Mandarin, a little bit of Cantonese, 
Um, I understand both those better than I can speak them, to, to be honest. Um, that's about it. And English, of course. Um, uh, love, love from Italy. Hi, Carolina from Italy. Hey, from San Francisco. Love your style. No, not the same. Uh, what is the best substitute for pork in the recipes? Uh, easiest substitute for pork is definitely chicken. Uh, if you can't eat meat at all, uh, prawns usually works. Fish, but you've got to be a little bit more delicate when you're cooking any type of fish. And also, if you're using really strong flavors for pork dishes, it wouldn't necessarily always work with your fish. Um, uh, so, uh, Jeremy, blah, blah, blah. guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. We have one more, two more questions coming. Is there any alternative to oyster sauce? Yes. This is what I'm using today for my recipe, my PayPal tofu recipe, which is a vegetarian recipe. It is a vegetarian stir fry sauce, very, very, very similar flavor and texture to oyster sauce, except it's made with mushroom extract, not oyster extract. Um, Chower Power, great names today. Uh, Jeremy, thanks for inspiring me to enjoy cooking. I even bought a wok during the pandemic. Thank you very much for buying a wok. Um, thank you. I, I hope it was a school wok one. <laughs> um, uh, what ingredients do you like uh, for hot pot? A hot pot for me, Eric, has to be a whole table full of every single ingredient that you could possibly get on that table. Um, I personally, I love um, having seafood and simple things like uh, really good quality scallops or things like that in, in hot pot. Um, what about rice wine alternative? Rice wine alternative, good stock. Uh, if you can't have uh, alcohol, then a good stock, a good chicken stock, a good vegetable stock will, um, will suffice. Uh, if you want, you might need to add a little bit of something sweet in there, it's even a little bit of uh, sort of uh, cordial sometimes works, uh, but thin down. So like a, 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 a not concentrate, but um, like a like putting squash in, instead of alcohol in. Um, is light soy sauce the same as thin soy sauce? Yes. I, as far as I know, um, lovely Q&A, what two, is it's called a what? It's funny, often, often, okay, great. Guys, low sodium recipes, still there. I think I'm going to get ready for the live cooking demo uh, on our paid membership. So if you're not a member already, don't forget, you can click the link underneath the channel title on the school walk channel title to join our membership i'm going to be cooking a char seal my mum's char seal recipe uh, and some paypal tofu which is basically like a deep fried salted egg tofu uh, quenelle uh, on pak choy uh, in about half an hour lovely to see you all don't forget Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.